So welcome to another episode of Men Able Matters. Now, I'm absolutely delighted that my guest this time is actually one of our Platinum members, uh, and that means that, therefore, he is actually a patron of the Men Able movement. And, uh, and he contacted us and said that he very much wanted to be involved. So I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about who he is, where he's from and all that stuff and what attracted him to the Men Able movement. And, uh, and what we're going to do through this podcast is to just talk a little bit about how our two sets of values and beliefs are aligned. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome to Men Able Matters, uh, Chris Wiseman, who is the MD of Wessex Garages. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, very well indeed. And uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to, to do the podcast with you today. It's great. No, you're, well, you're more than welcome. So uh, this one's going to be a bit of a two-way street because I know you want to uh, talk a little bit more about the Men Able bo- Movement and what we're about. Um, and obviously, I want you to talk about you <laughs> uh, and your business. So um, I, I think between us, we'll we'll get there. So, so in good old-fashioned Men Able Matters style, could you give us a bit of a background of who you are, where you're from, what you do? And um, yeah, ab- absolutely. So Managing Director of Wessex Garages, which uh, I've been a part of Wessex Garages uh, for probably 21 years now, mm-hmm. and uh, took over as Managing Director November 2019, uh, right as we were dealing with Brexit uh, just before <laughs> COVID hit and we, we locked down. So you know, a, a great a great learning curve for me uh, in, in that role. But I've been motor trade pretty much all my life. I started out cleaning cars when I was 14 years old. Um, and other than a brief sabbatical, I've always been in the motor trade um, <clears throat> for over over 40 years now. Uh, traditional sales route, I've come up through uh, the, the selling selling route, but I've been involved in after sales and uh, in parts and service as well in that period as well, a bit of, in, bit of time in marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a, a broad knowledge of the industry uh, worked for some plc's and uh wessex garages when i joined was privately owned and was taken over or bought by bt holdings a, a japanese multinational uh, about six years ago now mm. so excellent okay well i know that um actually you know you boosted us tremendously because i think you heard us talk or me talking on a uh, car dealer live magazine podcast and i think a couple of things that uh, i think you said to me there was some stuff in there that resonated with you and it made you pick up the phone uh, and we had a chat and then you know realized that our values were aligned so tell me a little bit more about about what that was yeah the the um the interview that you you gave i think that the comment that that really resonated with me with me was um i think about somebody in the room you know, saying uh, if somebody's off with uh, any sort of mental issue or stress, uh, they they were immediately criticised. And if you open up the subject matter, uh, what's to stop people? Um, I think the expression was swinging the lead, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and we're all going off with stress or whatever it happens to be. There's and a more fruity version of that, but swinging the lead is good. Yeah. Yes, but I think that... Yeah. <laughs> The um, the point that that you made and I, and your response to it I think was 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 the bit that got me and that was what what sort of business are you running where people think they've got to do that mm-hmm. you know what's going wrong in the business that that, mm-hmm. that that is a that's going through somebody's mind and it and it got me thinking uh, of all of the things that that happened during lockdown um, and we know all the physical uh, constraints and the problems that we faced. Uh, in the economy in the business and it was went through that that year which was tough it really got me thinking about the effects it was having on certain people i'm uh, reasonably privileged where i live but you know i have part our colleagues will be living uh, on their own uh, not having physical contact not being able to go out and even i felt it in the the lockdown that we've last we've just come out of even through working was well okay i'm coming to work i'm going home but that's it and that's mm. eat sleep repeat and and even i found that tough yeah. um so what other colleagues were were, were forced to to endure mm. 
And, and I suppose the one great thing that's come out of the whole lockdown thing is the fact that mental awareness is now you know, surfaced as a, as a real topic and a real issue um, that, that affects us. And then you start digging down and, and we've had a conversation about the effects and the cost it has to a business. And, and it's quite frightening. Yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely is. And, and uh, you know, I'm like you, I've been in the industry for a very long time. And, uh, you know, I think the in industry has contributed to keeping a lid on those mental health issues that you mentioned. And some of the working practices and cultures have been such that, you know, they perhaps even contribute to them. And certainly, you know, from my case of, I've never felt that I've worked in an organization where it's been psychologically safe for me to ever reach out and talk to someone and be totally upfront and honest. Um, and I think, you know, you're spot on that this, this stuff is now coming to the surface and more and more people are starting to say, no, that that's, that's got to change. Um, and I think as leaders, we, we have an opportunity, don't we, to, uh, and almost an obligation to, to create that environment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we pride ourselves as an industry. We, we, you know, we pat ourselves on the back all the time about we're agile, we're flexible, look, we can deal with anything that's thrown at us, we can find a solution to it, and we can deal with all these problems. And whether that's a, a manufacturer changing something or the government legislation changing, whatever it is, and we, we use these great words, as I say, agile, flexible, you know, challenging. And, and, and that's what makes, to me, the business exciting. Um, but at the same time, you can look at areas of our business and think we are so antiquated and stuck in our ways and all the things we don't talk about, some of which comes out of it being a predominantly male environment, which, of mm. course, we, uh, we're all aware of. Um, but, yeah, some of some of the views uh, that we hold are, are to totally antiquated um, and we need to we need to wake ourselves up. We need to see what the real effect is on the business um and on our colleagues and and i think as when we first spoke my my point was this isn't a training course yeah um yeah. quite often you know oh, there's a great idea let's find an off-the-shelf training course that, yeah. that suits that we'll, we'll tick that box uh, and that'll do mm. um and to me that's not ever what i wanted in this subject and this field what i wanted was uh not for us to become experts because we can't be um, but we can identify, you know, be, be trained, be good enough to identify or create an environment where we can see where problems are occurring. Mm, mm. And we can then point people in the right direction for it um, and get it early. Yeah. You know, find it early on, start talking about it early on. Yeah. But it doesn't become a problem. You know, yeah. I guess the old problem shared is a problem halved type approach is, is as good an analogy as anything. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And I think that the training bit was something else that resonated with you, wasn't it, when when we spoke? Because uh, I think I mentioned that on the podcast from memory and, you know, said that, you know, yes, there is a place for training people to be more aware and, and able to deal with sort of the, you know, the initial effects of mental health issues and breakdowns and that sort of thing. Um but I don't think personally, I don't think our business, our industry is ready for that yet. Uh, and so the premise of, of Men Able is to work with people like yourself. And in the nicest possible way, I think I said to you, you know, Chris, this is your responsibility. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this, this is where it starts is with the leaders. And, uh, you know, the minute that gets fobbed off to another department, then you, you're kind of missing the point a little bit, really. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly, exactly the way you just said. Absolutely. And I, I'm to me, that's the only only way it works is if mm. you own it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the senior management team, my directors have, have been involved in in the discussion about um, coming on board with you. Of course they have, and I know you've had conversations with them, but quite open and frank conversations with, with both of them. Yeah. Um, and I just see that, yeah, we, the industry isn't, isn't ready, certainly not prepared for it at the moment but there's got to be a start point hasn't yes. there there's got to be yeah. a start point to changing the culture in a business or the culture in an industry mm -hmm. uh, and, and creating an environment that is is a is a much better place to work we talk about the, um 
just the cost of recruitment you know alone we talked about before is is, is staggering if we yeah. get that wrong yeah. um, and we don't create an environment that's a, a, a decent place to work then um yeah we're, we're going to continually fork out money continually lose productivity mm. and, and continually lose good people in the business absolutely well i've used those numbers uh, a few times since we spoke and and i think that did scare all of us when we did a bit of a uh, a quick calculation on those on the numbers that involved in uh you know staff turnover or attrition uh, and i've mentioned that to a few other people and they've said yeah that's probably about right mm. um you know the kind of 35 to 40 percent staff turnover and think wow phew, that, that is quite scary now, yeah. you, you mentioned in there chris about um change and i've i've written down is is it a complete change i mean what you know what would be the bits that you think you know, are we talking about a, a massive overhaul here or tweaks and, and amendments? What, what's your thoughts? No, on that? I'd, 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 you know, I'd, I'd like to think we have a fairly open culture. Mm. I like to think we communicate well with our, with our teams. Um, some people may disagree. Some people won't. You can never please everybody. <laughs> but I think we have a fairly open uh, culture in what we do. Um, but uh, an open culture is often talking about business matters not mm. personal matters mm. and i think it's crossing that boundary between the two yeah so that people understand it's it's okay to talk about it in, in, in a work environment things that are affecting you outside of work mm. um from personal experience with with some of my guys trying to get people to open up is 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 very difficult because mm. it's so outside of people's comfort zone and they're not expecting it uh, but like I said, you've got, the journey's got to start at some point. So we start it now. You know, uh, this is great launch uh, opportunity for us to, to share my views, your views with uh, with all of the colleagues in in the group. And and you let it evolve, really. You let it see how it how it how it's received. Yeah. Um, that people can see that we're genuinely uh, uh, engaging. Mm. We. It was something I was really keen to do uh, when I took over as managing director. We were um, we were short in a few departments, one of which was our HR, uh, as is quite commonplace in the in the industry. Uh, and I brought my HR manager on board, um, and the part of their role is onboarding, inducting, better recruiting. Um, when they're here, what's the review process? We we have been quite poor at that, and and this fits in with it. Um, it, it they're not mutually exclusive topics, you know, mental health and onboarding and recruitment. It, they, and my view is, and I used the expression yesterday talking to somebody. Somebody leaves our business, it's our fault. Yeah, you know, we're really quick to say he was no good. Yeah, he couldn't do this, or you know, there's there's an issue. I'm glad he's gone. And and my view is so different to that. It's mm. if somebody leaves a business, it's our fault. So either we shouldn't have recruited them in the first place, and they were the wrong person. So we have to look at our recruitment uh, techniques and uh, our onboarding. But either we shouldn't have recruited them, or when they were with us, we didn't give them a, a, a either the support, the training, or the environment for them to get out of it what they thought they were, they were going to get out of. Mm -hmm. and, and with recruitment being so tough at the moment as well, we are recruiting from outside of our industry uh, and continually do that. Um, and quite often they've been exposed to totally different company ethos yeah. and, and, and company working practice. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I spoke to somebody yesterday who's an HR uh, manager for a large dealer group. Um, has been with them for five years, but prior to that was with a uh, a multi-site, I mean, massive, <laughs> I have to say, uh, supermarket chain. And he said, you know, coming out of there and into the automotive industry, he said it was like he'd time traveled back 30 years. Mm. And I said, wow, really? And he went, yeah. He said, you, you would be surprised. And I said, well, no, perhaps I wouldn't. But yeah, it's, it's, it's still un, unnerving to hear that. Um, yeah, we, we, are, we are behind the curve, I think, with, compared to other industries. Other mm, industries mm. have realized that, that that 
recruitment and training and cultural and in work environment is um is, is become more more prevalent yeah, um, yeah. And, and there's less there's less focus on productivity because the productivity is the natural output of of all the things that go before it yeah. onboarding <laughs> the right people the right training the right environment and the productivity is the output yeah and quite often we start with the productivity don't we and it's well you didn't do this he didn't do that he hasn't sold this therefore there's a problem but it, but that's all part of uh, this this i say not mutually exclusive but our our processes and our management and our team have got to become better coaches mm -hmm. um and and quick to identify what the real problems are yeah uh, now, now you mentioned that uh, and we we you know we totally agree on this not being a training issue you know there's probably some coaching skills and development to be done but that's not the same as going on a course um but the point f f for me to think about is you know we we are a diagnostic and fix it business you know by by our nature you know because we work with pieces of metal and, and mechanics uh, or mechanical objects, I should say, um, you know, we are used to and good at diagnosing a problem and fixing it, whether that be someone's transportation needs or fixing it when it goes wrong, all that sort of stuff. And, and I think we have a tendency or we've had a tendency to apply that thinking to people as well. So what, what can we do is put you on the spot here a bit, Chris, but what do you think we can do to kind of get out of that and get our managers thinking less like diagnosing and fixing it because uh, the other part of that of course is as a man if our, our mindset is if we can't fix something then what's the point talking about it so how, how could we you know bundle all of that up and work with our managers to say yeah the journey is about you becoming more of a coach uh and and looking after your team yeah i think um i think it starts with the word awareness doesn't it we talk mm. about mental awareness or mental mm -hmm. health awareness and that that that's the biggest start point for me. First of all, understanding there's a problem there, that not everything is a diagnose, fix, mechanical process, that yeah. there, are, there are people um, for, for all sorts of reasons uh, suffering on all sorts of level with, yeah. With, yeah. with mental health. Uh, and that can be from the very worst examples to just people having a bad day Mm -hmm. and no yeah. one realizing that they're having a bad day absolutely um, yeah. and you're right it's about coaching people skills but it's about managers understanding that there's somewhere they can go and get a bit of advice or get a bit of help with a a, a colleague problem um i said it's not about us being the experts in mental health people train for years and years and years you know psychologists to understand um the, the inner workings of 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 the mind but it but it is about us saying okay this this guy this girl is reacting slightly differently to a situation something's changed generally it's not the workplace that's changed um because we're a, a bit of a factory and we do the same things every day generally uh so it's, it's generally not a workplace thing can be can be you know all sorts of things mm. bullying it can be all sorts of uh things that go on in the workplace that we're unaware of but if we can pick up on that early enough and we can coach our guys train our guys to, to for the for the warning signs um and we probably only need to do it once or twice to create some real advocates within the business as well yeah, yeah. because then you get a snowball effects you get people saying to their colleagues yeah actually i did have a bit of a problem and the great news is i walked into the, my manager's office and spoke to him about it and he quite happily listened to me and then was able to point me in the right direction or give me some advice or you know speak to you guys and, and get some some real i don't know something really positive out of, out of the discussion Mm -hmm. um, and that snowball effect then helps. And I think then you prevent what we started talking about at the very beginning is the, the culture or the environment where 
somebody's swinging the lead for for want of a better yeah yeah or approaching their boss and saying look i need a chat and the boss going yeah 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 come back later i'm busy or mm. you know yeah but you didn't hit your target yesterday so i haven't got time to talk to you yeah and, and we're all guilty of it you know we yeah. are all guilty we're all busy we're all driven by uh, budgets and we're mm -hmm. all driven by the output mm -hmm. um but when you talk about a performance issue with a manager you are never talking about the individuals you're talking about as you said why didn't we sell enough cars mm, mm. Uh, the, the manager will never turn around and say well it actually it's because this particular sales exec is is really struggling mm. with something that's going on outside of the industry or outside of the business and therefore you didn't sell it it's yeah he's not a very good salesman really yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's difficult to find sometimes the root cause of, of a performance problem mm. but i've probably never spoken about the root cause of a of a performance issue being mental awareness or mental health yeah before, yeah. before now yeah but it's almost part of the the checklist isn't it of 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 performance management of either recognition reward or or you know understanding why somebody's struggling at their at their role yeah it's almost part of the checklist now yeah. Is yeah, everything fair, all right? No, exactly. Yeah. And fair to say that we, you know, we are going to be working with you and uh, you're joining us for a leaders forum uh, soon that we are uh, going to have this conversation with, um, you know, the other patrons and, and other senior leaders across the industry, of, of which there are some formidable characters. Mm. Um, so I've no doubt we're going to come up with some sort of strategies for how we can we can do all of this stuff. Uh, and sort of work with you over the next few years to sort of say, right, come on, let's, let's, you know, how do we embed this so that, so that it becomes an invisible thread that runs through the business. So it's not, you know, mental health. Oh yeah. That's that thing we do at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. Yeah. It, it change, changing a culture is, is, um, I learned a long time ago, you can talk about the culture and you change mm. the culture and, and you can use all the words about changing the culture of the business. Um, but if you physically don't change anything, <laughs> you, you do the same thing. You know, you can tell somebody, I want, you know, I want you to talk about, you know, I want you to talk to all your staff or be open and you know, uh, to all of your, your colleagues so they can come and talk to you if, about anything, mental health. And uh, but if you physically don't change anything, if you physically mm. can't feel it or do anything differently, you go back into your office, you do the same thing you did yesterday, you think... I'm now more approachable, but you haven't really changed anything. You've not really <laughs> opened up or had that conversation. So, yeah, if you can't, you know, learn, learn it a long time ago. If you can't feel the change, you you haven't you haven't changed anything. Right. Wow. Yeah, I like that. I might adopt that phrase. <laughs> I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all do, don't we? we all borrow stuff. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and and we can't be that. You know, that kind of look. We we. Yeah, we're changing. We're on the path to change. But before we do that, we've got 35 green automatic one liters out the back we've got to get rid of. Uh, so we'll do change tomorrow. You know, yeah. it's it, it can't be that. No, absolutely not. And and the forum's going to be great. I'm, I'm looking forward to the forum because I don't think any of us ind individually have the answers or the solutions to what we're doing. But collectively, and I'm knowing some of the guys that are on the forum, um, I, I'm really looking forward to uh, to learning every day is a school day for me so I, I, it's a great opportunity to learn yeah no indeed now that this, that brings me nicely on to just a little bit of an overview of, of men able and that is that um, I'm the first to say that I have no formal qualifications in mental health other than 35 years of, of lived experience of keeping a lid on stuff uh, the lid popped off a year ago and that took me down a route that made me choose two paths and the path of despair or the path of hope um the path of dis you know both paths get you to the same destination but the path of despair will get you there a lot quicker um and i i chose the path of hope and it was from that that i thought you know uh one of our, our board advisors emma uses a lovely phrase you know we're all here to serve uh we just don't all know it yet and uh, and when you live a life of service you you receive joy in abundance you know and that that will sound very zen and very philosophical but but, uh, you know, that becomes a kind of way of being, if you like. Um, and so what we've said from the beginning is Menable does not provide the answers. It works with 
you know, enlightened leaders like yourself, and as you say, the others that will be on that forum, uh, to actually say, look, you know, let's all be vulnerable about this. If we don't have the answers, which we don't, then let's say that we don't have the answers. Um, and I was going to say to you earlier as well about, um, you know, your team, um, you know, through this, and I know we're going to share this podcast with them, you, you would encourage them to come forward and say, actually, boss, you know, have we thought of this? Have we thought of that? Wouldn't you? Absolutely. I think this is a, a, the open door policy that it works, you know, both ways. And, and there's a responsibility as well. Um, for, for any of the colleagues that work in the business, there is a responsibility um, if, if you want to get on in the job and you mm -hmm. want to improve and you want to take the next level. It can't always be about the management team identifying the individual. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's got to be the individual saying, look, boss, I really want to go to the next level. How, what, how do I do it? What's my, what's my route there? Yeah. And likewise, it, this can't be all about that uh, yeah, we're going to write a policy on mental health awareness and, and stick it out there and we're all going to follow it. This has got to be from the ground up, yeah. come, coming up to the management team. And, and if we don't understand what the problems are, we'll try and fix something that doesn't need to be fixed. <laughs> um, and we could be looking over here and we should be looking in entirely a different direction. So yeah. unless any of the team colleagues that we've got around us and we've got 280 something staff at the moment um in, unless they talk to us about what we can do better uh then then we can't fix it and, and they're, they're in the best place to to understand the issues yeah no absolutely they're see. they're on the ground and uh, and but that's also why you know again we we've veered away from doing a training course uh, on this because what will happen is it'll be the people who go on the training course that feel it's their responsibility or people lean on them um, and that's fine but what happens if it's somebody's day off <laughs> mm. or they're doing a handover or whatever it might be and, and that's where you know that's where we we've, we've had to say no it's this isn't about training this is about a more deeper more sort of meaningful cultural movement really um, yeah the the word awareness i think has, has never been more 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 succinct to use mm. as an example it is is really just about um a, a better working environment uh, yeah. that understands that people have problems sometimes that that need need help yeah. and and if we can provide that because it can't be provided elsewhere or give it give some advice point them in the right direction or at least if nothing else problem you know, shares problem halved mm. uh, metaphor again um you know we, we've done our job and we've yeah. improved the environment haven't we yeah absolutely absolutely uh well to help with that um obviously this podcast is then going to join a library of probably getting on for 30 podcasts now uh available in both audio and visual uh, video versions on youtube and spotify um, and we've got subjects on there that range from uh, divorce to grief to, uh, you know, what happens if you're a newly promoted manager and you've not had the training to, uh, you know, living a free range life to right the way up to last week. We did one on the menopause, believe it or not. <laughs> so the word men menopause and motor trade in the same sentence, I don't think I've ever heard that used. No, no. <laughs> So your, your team can sort of uh, tap into all of that as a, a bit of a toolkit to see what, what there is. Um, no, on our, no, absolutely great. And we, we will be sharing as much of the content and the information that, mm -hmm. that you guys have got out there. Um, and it'll be interesting to see the feedback. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the response from some of the team as to, uh, and, and how it's received. Yeah. Um, uh, and and it's not an overnight fix. We know that it's not a. Uh, so you don't you don't change something like this overnight. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a work in progress, as all these things always are. So, yeah, definitely. Um, now I'm going to ask you just. Um, so we're obviously going to share this with your team, but uh, a, a question that we are going to ask the leaders on the forum, uh, and this might put you on the spot a little bit, Chris. So you might want to have to think about this, but we can have a <laughs> edit anything out if you want um what is the art of the possible i heard that phrase the other day and i thought wow i love that um 
So while you have a think about that, what's the art of the possible in your business? Let me tell you a little bit of context for that. Uh, one of our patron members, um, they actually had uh, a, a member of staff who took their own life at the back end of last year uh, across their business. And that has had uh, a, a significant shock factor uh, to everyone. You know, everyone's been moved by that. Uh, and it's caused everyone to ask the question, you know, what could we do to be a part of the prevention strategy for that individual? And so yesterday I had a conversation with another one of our businesses that's at the other end of that uh, development in that they have, they're a new start business. Uh, and I said to them, what's the art of the possible in terms of, you know, you're starting off, you're only a handful of people, um, <clears throat> you know, what can you do in your business to put something in place to prevent that happening in your business in, in 10 years time? So uh, I don't know what your, what would your, be your thoughts around all of that then, Chris? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a broad, a broad question um, without a shadow of a doubt. And, it, and it's, when you hear about cases like that, it's quite it, it that's a real brings it all home doesn't it mm. and um and to be fair we've just um we've just lost a member of staff um who'd been with us for 20 years um who, who, who passed away quite suddenly and um i'm already seeing not the fallout's the wrong word for it but i'm already seeing the reaction to it from from staff and right. uh, colleagues and how they're how they I say coping with it or or not coping with it yeah, to yeah. be honest and it was quite quite staggering yeah um because it'll be triggering a myriad of different emotions absolutely. in different people won't it absolutely and and i guess the first thing you have to think about is um how well equipped am i to deal with this mm -hmm. how well equipped is the business to deal with it but probably more importantly how how much flexibility we talked about flexibility and agility earlier but how flexible is a company to deal with it mm -hmm. so are we prepared um to recognize it and and uh, allow people the opportunity to express themselves it, it goes back to the environment if if people don't think they can express themselves or and you're suppressing emotion in the business um it's I think you, you used the expression earlier, it's like a pressure cooker and then the lid yeah. comes off it. And, yeah. and and that manifests itself in all sorts of different ways then, uh, normally in as much as the, the, the company, you know, all the bad points about the company will then come together and you know, none of the good points are ever raised. Mm -hmm. um, I want to really be known as a business, not outside, I'm not, uh, there's a spin-off of what the company looks like from outside, but internally, I, I want it to be a business that recognises these issues, you know, and, you know, if you, hopefully in 12, 24 months, 36 months, when you're talking to colleagues or we're having a conversation, it's not, oh, and by the way, we're quite good at dealing with mental health. I think it's got to be more as a, do you know what, as a, as a company, yeah, I can, I can talk to anybody about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm encouraged to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm encouraged to talk about it because by talking about it, it makes me feel a lot better. And do you know what I mean? I'm not going to do the, I'm going home, I'm off ill, and we don't know why. But there's a whole gambit around stress. And mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of things that create stress. And somebody taught me a long time ago it's, it's, it's to how the individual deals with stress as opposed to what else is happening around them. Mm. Uh, and of course, if you're not very good at dealing with it, that manifests it in sickness and absence. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you feel comfortable by saying, hang on a second, this isn't quite right in the business, this isn't quite right for me, um, then stress is dealt with entirely differently. It just becomes a uh, a, a problem that needs a workable solution around it between you know a couple or more individuals so i think you know the art of the possible if you if you can pin for me i can pin it down would be how our company is perceived from within from the team and i'll be disappointed in 12 months time i'll be disappointed in six months time if people 
don't think we've changed our attitude. I'm not talking about changing the company. I'm not talking about everybody's working three days a week and four days are on holiday because we're a business and we've got customers, manufacturers and shareholders and all those people uh, exist in order to give us a job that we can earn money. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about the physicality of it. I really am talking about the, um, that people will feel better working in the business um and uh, and it's on it's on an agenda all the time yeah you know it's yeah. spoken about on an agenda uh particularly when you're talking about any kind of oh say it's difficult to do um, performance related issues good and bad and what's what why is one of our businesses and we've got seven businesses now across the southwest and and, and wales and and that business performs exceptionally well and that business performs poorly right and and undoubtedly undoubtedly some of that will be the motivation of the team yeah yeah almost certainly um that that creates that disparity yeah yeah well i have to say um i for one am very much looking forward to us working together on all of those issues whatever that looks like um, as you've already alluded to, you know, your team can tap into the resources that we have at Menable on, even if it's just the podcast and the, uh, you know, audio versions of those, uh, or they can contact us through the website menable.org. Um, and obviously, and we've already talked that post lockdown, we will get together and we will do some Absolutely. stuff physically. <laughs> Actually go like that and go, oh, you are real. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll be you know, this, the, the, the Menable links will be on our website as well. It's something yeah. that we're, uh, that puts it in the forefront of everybody all the time. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And we are, you know, we are working closely with, uh, you know, properly qualified professionals as well. We're working very closely with Ben. So if people feel that they need to reach out uh, and they do want, you know, real sort of intense help, uh, then that's available and you can get that through us or through yourselves. And as you say, the, the numbers and what have you will be shared uh, over the coming weeks and months on that front as well. So brilliant. Chris, it's an absolute pleasure working with you. I am you know, honoured to have you as part of the Menable family and look forward to working with the team at Wessex. And uh, But for now, uh, thank you very much for joining us on this podcast and we'll catch up again soon. Thanks very much. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, Sue. Take care. Thanks very much.